Hi Simmers, welcome to Simpit Academy. In this uh, channel, we will look at all the various components required to build a cockpit. And then once you understand the concepts, you will be able to build any kind of aircraft um, of your choice in a cheap and affordable way. So, like in college, a lot of subjects are named in um, stages like 101, 201. Here we look at the hardware, inputs, uh, switches, and output displays. We look at the how to wire them. We look at the software to interface them. Um, the example used here is DCS BIOS. And then later on, we'll look at an example of a specific aircraft. In my case, the F-15E. And the last part will be learning how to operate the various um, parts of the aircraft. So components of a cockpit. We have the frame of the aircraft of your choice. We have panels. Um, some aircrafts will have a lot of panels. For example, the A10C. I think it has the most number of panels. Um, the F16, F18, F15 all have a lot less panels and then obviously we have to build the uh, switches install the switches uh, and the knobs on each panel and in terms of display the easiest one would be just those small LED or the bigger more complex one LCDs we will also have to learn how to interface hardware and software together that's about it the main part of a cockpit the other things like doing backlighting which is very nice to look at but pretty tedious and then additional things like base shaker motion platform are all optional um, depends on whether how far you want to go so frame this is an example of an A10C you can have like a one piece board on each console left and right or you can build individual panels and put them on a frame So the more complicated type of doing a panel is having various section, the top part where you have the ladders um, and the holes to hold the switches. The back panel is actually the, the ones that hold the panels and the top part just shows the ladders and cover it to look nice and the middle part is if you want to do backlighting you have the, a light panel which is normally translucent to spread the light which is totally optional you can even collapse all this into one without the back panel without the light panel so ways to make panels we can print them on um, sticky paper you know um, like a label paper and then cut it out to match the panel this is how I started um, many years ago obviously if you have a CNC machine um, it will look very nice you have to spray paint um, you have to use white panels spray black and then engrave 
the paint uh, to expose the white letters this looks very nice um, but you need a CNC machine and then you have you can do the 3d printing uh, method so for knobs you can it can be quite expensive to buy knobs um, if you have a panel or an aircraft that uses many of the same knobs you can buy one or 3d print one and then um, create a mold like this and pour the resin and then you can have many copies uh, in a cheap way so I'm not going to explain in detail you can read this for yourself you can watch the tap plastics video where they sell the um, mixture to build the mold and then here the second part is to cast the resin so you follow the steps and you'll be able to make a lot of knobs so for inputs you have buttons, toggles, rotary switches, encoders and potentiometers okay input switches 90 to 95 percent of what you put on the panel are going to be some sort of input switches um, not just buttons but everything almost everything is considered a kind of a switch occasionally you may have some output but most of the time the stuff we put on panels are inputs so you have things like um, buttons and toggles right all this listed here so buttons are usually push buttons um, momentary um, occasionally they may be latched and the one in green is the most common that I use in terms of the size it's just right occasionally you might need something really big and fat like this one okay and this type, this type um, you normally put on a PCB I don't really like this um, the connection the legs break whatever so in terms of toggles these are the two types that I use the smaller one and then this is the bigger one but the body is actually small compared to all this um, and they are these are quite cheap too so again um, you have latch and momentary you have two-way or three-way okay left right or sometimes the three-way will be like in the middle like this on off on and one side or both sides could be momentary as well not always you know staying in the same position the momentary ones will spring back to the center then you might sometimes need to use this uh, push-pull okay you pull it and then you push it and rotary switches are also quite commonly used um, the D type the D shaped type uh, is quite common and they can be 45 degrees or 30 degrees rotation this type the nerd ones um, I prefer this type now because um, it's easy to put a knob on it and set to any starting position that you like compared to this type where you need to rotate the whole body to the right um, angle but this type um, the downside is that it's only 30 degrees okay as uh, you see here they may or may not come with the knobs and you can make your own or buy your own so they are all 30, 30 degrees 
they don't come with 45 degrees or 60 degrees this type um, the D-shaped ones occasionally you get the knob that comes with the D you just put on it it's very easy most of them don't have this it's round then in order for the knob not to rotate you need a set screw like this and then you need to rotate this so this to me is kind of tedious I avoid using this when possible now for the number of stops all this they normally have up to six or eight uh, positions sometimes 12 that you can use you just turn rotate anti-clockwise all the way the pin holes um, they start with position two and then three four five so you put the pin and then you have a lock ring on it then you it will limit the number of turns so this is kind of customable customizable which is uh, good now for encoders they can rotate in both directions clockwise counterclockwise and they don't stop unlike um, rotary switches they just keep spinning and again I use the one um, here in green the nerd ones just like rotary switch uh, it's easy to select the starting position and then the analog switches the potentiometers or parts for short I also use both um, usually I try to use this where possible the nerd ones and then occasionally you may want to use a slide or linear part uh, this is more common for like the Cessna now output displays as you can see here you can have all these colors these are the simplest kind of display LEDs in different colors okay the green the yellow the red whatever this is the A10 more over here and many here for the warning displays this is a CDU uh, using LCD and same thing here these are more complex this one this require um, lines and lines of code in DCS BIOS so for another type of display the 7 segment um, this max 7 72 19 is the most common that you can get which also means that um, more people are using this and if you need to write code you can find them and copy and paste and modify from there the second more common one is the TM1637 they only have so far I find these two colors and then this 16K33 are much bigger in size okay the downside of this common max 7219 is that they come in red I can't find them in other colors so if you like this color um, you may have to swap out so like this one this is fixed this one is glued to the PCB board right the blue ones you buy the green PCB board the um, seven segments are detachable then you can buy the yellow green ones and put it on okay this is the combination of course you need to get the seven segments of the right dimension like this um, 0.36 inch size so sometimes you can mix and match combine 
like this one is very long on the um, A10 the VHF uh, AM and FM you need two sets of four digits and then in the middle you can have a blank this one is the third digit will be blank here same here then UHF you use two sets of three digits instead like this okay to get this six digits and then presets you can just use a two digit so just choose the right combination then more complex ones will be things like 14 segment display this is um, I believe the this one 16k33 it's um, quite a bit bigger than the uh, 0.36 inch <coughs> ILS you can use a three digit and a two digit because the total is five and then other types you have all these um, OLED displays rectangular um, squarish whatever now character displays um, can differ a lot in price like this one the 1602 LCDs is only like three bucks the VFD it's 35 bucks quite a lot more and then this alphanumeric ones for the A10C CMSC you need three pieces of that at 40 bucks each so the total becomes 120 for this one the to do this the CDU you need an LCD and you can buy it as a package which also comes with a mega and the whole thing is about $22 which is very cheap so 1602 by itself um, requires a lot of wiring and uh, this is quite a pain so you can simplify by getting this I2C um, card and then you stick it all the pins stick it there and this is how it looks like at the back then you only have four pins to um, the ground and the VCC and then you have two more the um, SDA and SCL and then um, it will simplify the wiring a lot now for methods of interfacing all these cards um, this is a very common one Leo Bartner um, I find it pretty expensive they have the 32 pin 64 um, all this groovy game gear fidgets open cockpits are not so common and pretty old technology and then I tried once to do this um, master slave uh, approach with the Max Foy 87 chips um, I have a lot of failures with the chips so like 50% of the chips would die um, so I gave up on this concept then I discovered this breakout board uh, initially it was a kit that you need to solder and it was very painful to solder and also if you don't do a good job then uh, it will not work so this was a disaster if you use this pins type um, they tend to come off by themselves or sometimes if you just tuck the wires uh, pull the wires by mistake um, they will come off too so um, I tried taping it and that 
doesn't really work well then there is a better solution which is the pre-started uh, breakout board um, you just all the pins align it to the mega and it works pretty well but um, as you can see it's uh, not cheap at 32 bucks each so a couple of years later uh, in fact this year I just discovered um, the latest which is pre-soldered and much cheaper at five dollars okay so this is my choice now to use with the Arduino Mega I see a lot of people using um, smaller ones but this is the best bang for buck so where to get switches all these cans uh, striked out ones are companies locally in the US that have closed shop okay Circuit City Radio Shack Osh Osh was mostly for um, fasteners and um, the other two are for toggle switches all kind of small switches I moved on to buying online DigiKeys, Mauser, all this however they charge a lot for handling fees um, delivery fees whatever and I discovered AliExpress which is a lot cheaper from China um, they used to provide free shipping now they charge for shipping even then it's a lot cheaper than this so most of the time if possible I will buy from AliExpress now wiring switches you can see here Arduino um, normally you use the USB you provide the enough power occasionally if you need external power you can plug it in here using an adapter that is between 7 to 12 volts here or using this you connect to the VIN pin and the ground and the way I do color coding is all the digital pins I use blue and then all the 5 volt um, or 3 volt whatever power I use red analog ones I use yellow of course the ground I use black now analog pins you can also use them as the um, black digital pins okay which is awesome here so from A0 to A15 you have like 16 more to connect to um, switches so obviously the reverse is not true if you need to connect parts they can only be used here analog you cannot put you cannot connect parts to the digital pins wires solid stranded and cat I somehow don't like cat even though it seems um, economical to use them and then I also didn't like stranded um, but they don't break and they are easy to solder at the end but if you need one if you need the end to go into a breakout board then you need to solder to make them strong if it's uh, stranded so I normally use 22 uh, size so wiring the switches are mostly kind of standard for each type the buttons are easy just starting from pin number two you cannot start with zero or one number two all the way to 13 and then 14 to 21 here uh, skip these two these are 5 volt 22 23 like this all the way to 53 okay then you can do you can connect here as well 
for digital inputs on the analog side so just one leg to one pin and always to a ground you have several grounds and you can connect uh, many switches to a common ground so here in DCS BIOS this is like the sample code right this is the formula and basically you choose the correct um, code for the right function on the aircraft the correct panel and then you just need to put a pin okay you have you can choose either action um, button or this switch to position so here you see that for toggle you can also use this so for for buttons and toggles two-way toggles I use the same switch to POS rather than the action button you can see is the, the wiring system then for three-way toggle you just use two digital pins and ground is always in the middle encoders is like a three-way switch both sides to an input and then to the ground okay and here you do like two pins here just like this now rotary switch in the middle is the ground and then they go like one two three four five like this okay so just if you have four that you need to connect just put them together and then the ground is very simple so wiring analog input to do the parts wiring besides the ground the middle one will go to one of the analog pins A0 to A15 and then you need a power which is the 5 volt if you get it wrong you can just reverse the order now LEDs we have different colors and we have a ground called the cathode and the plus the anode which is bent with a longer leg to help you tell which is which so you need a resistor um, else you'll burn out the current will be too high so ground to the cathode and then from the anode you have a resistor then it goes to a pin okay it doesn't doesn't go to a VCC 5 volt 3 volt kind of thing so this is very easy and you can see here the breadboard here the whole line is all ground and this is all positive but we are not using the, the VCC part here so this is for one LED if you want to wire two then you actually need to have them in a series okay continuously together um, the minus plus minus plus then the resistor now if you do three or more LEDs then you run them in parallel all the cathodes together all the anodes together then the resistor to a pin this is a more complicated one I'm not I'll not go in depth for now in the future I will explain um, this in detail so you can use this max uh, 7219 board with the displays and um, wire them 
for many different combinations this one is easy this one for the 14 segment you only have the, um, it comes with actually it shows here five but you actually use just four the ground and VCC and the SDA SCL and then you program and it will work now to do this year's BIOS the easiest one is using a browser so the problem with this is that um, I think this has been discontinued and also I find that it only works for a few minutes maybe I didn't do it right but um, every time I tried it only worked for a few minutes and it stopped working so this is after you have installed it you can save the HTML for a quick reference you can drop down to choose the aircraft type that uh, you are using so as you can see here once you choose an aircraft type you can choose a specific panel or module instead of scrolling the whole thing you can jump straight to it so this DCS BIOS has since um, been discontinued by uh, Ian the founder and he has been taken over by um, people at github this one the there's a advanced usually you use simple and then if you want to see detailed um, code you may have to switch to like if it's part you want to use encoder instead then you go to advanced and then you see the encoder code um, instead of the potentiometer code both will still work but you have to switch to the advanced view so here I mentioned just now about um, github so there's been a fork and you go here to DCS flight panels github and download it you after you install the DCS BIOS you also in, have to install the Arduino IDE and here you just create a sketch for example copy those code I gave for the switches and then compile and when you run it you will see something like this like a DOS prompt window popping up and for each card you will have a port that you have to mention you can run several ports which you will use a different um, app there's a serial one and there's a multiple com port so use the choose the right type these are the common problems sometimes DCS BIOS can error out quite commonly so you just want to do the right thing okay if you get if you keep being asked to install SOCAT um, it could be other things like connecting the Arduino board first keeping DCS active um, wiring the parts if you have a code for the part um, so give the right port number stuff like that and never never use the standard notepad always use notepad plus plus to edit else you will have weird prompts so with all the switches you can even use things like here helios to see MFDs, UFCs, instruments, whatever. So when you have all these plus the physical switches, 
it will be a complete cockpit setup which is um, much more cooler and fun to fly with than um, always using mouse to click on everything alright so this is um, the introduction to how to set up a cockpit